In this part of the video, I'm going to be testing out to see what it's like just as a, a lens to use when you're not using a tripod, you don't have a steady area or anything like that. It's just more the walking around kind of lens. So the main one I'm going to use for the going out part is a 24 f1.4. It won't be at f1.4 throughout this because A, it's pretty bright, you don't need it there. Um, but uh, and I don't really need a shadow out the field because the kind of stuff I'm going to be shooting is more kind of landscape. Oh, is that sun? Is that sun? Oh, there's sunshine over there. Look at that. Um, so it'll be kind of at varying apertures, but it's more to see how easy it is to find the focus, find the exposure that you're needing, mainly using live view on this or the video mode in this to see how it works. But generally, just going to go around Edinburgh Castle and try and get some nice shots. So here's a couple of the shots which I took with uh, the lens and here I was just kind of looking over kind of near where I parked my car. The car is kind of parked over there and it was looking down kind of down the street and I was trying to see how how strong the vignetting was. Now what I'll say is that I don't have the details up here but what I did remember was these ones were shot at f1.4 because what happened was I had this lens on with the uh, Novoflex uh, adapter which doesn't transfer the EXIF data. So in other words, here it's saying it's like a 50 millimeter and it's something something. It doesn't know what lens is actually on. So fortunately, I have a very good memory. This was at f1.4 and straight away you're like, oh, that is some strong vignette. That is just pitch black down in the corners there. And it's also very obvious up in the corners up at the top as well. So vignetting at f1.4, very obvious. However, what about sharpness? Now if we're looking here, the NCP bit looks a little bit blurry. There's nothing really in this image which I'm thinking, oh, that's super duper sharp, that's brilliant. However, everything is, I would say, okay. Everything's absolutely fine, nothing really to complain about. Uh, again, this is quite a long distance shot, so a lot of stuff will be in focus. And the closest stuff, which you can't really see, there was nothing really that was close. Okay, so the next one here, again, I think I'd gone to F2 with this one. Uh, strong vignetting still going on, but it's there's something about this one where it really has a three dimensional feel because it's so wide angle and because it's so shallow, you know, such a narrow depth of field that the bit which you do have in focus, which is kind of oh wait, it's still loading this area here, it really makes it pop compared to the background. Now, again, on the background, what we are seeing is the green. Uh, chromatic aberration going on around all the high contrast stuff in the background. So you've got green stuff there and some more kind of green and purple going on there. So that's in the background shots. And uh, the closer, I don't really have anything which is closer, uh, which is out of focus, but you would have a, a chromatic aberration bit to see. But that would probably normally be a different colour. But yeah, I, I, I liked the kind of colour and the saturation and the contrast, definitely that was going on in that image. And then that image facing around to the other direction. What I would say is that the chromatic aberration, when you're at an f1.4, f1.8, f2, is pretty much a bit pump on the background. Like you'll, if, if I go super zooming in, you can see that it's just like it's got a green, a super green halo going on around the background. Now normally that's fine, but if it's as clear cut an image in the background like that, you will see, especially when you blow it up onto a poster or something, you will see that green chromatic aberration. However, what I will say is the stuff which is sharp is very sharp. So all that dirt is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Another one, kind of a close-up shot. This is almost trying to get to his macro ability, see how close I can get. And I was pretty impressed with how close and also just how milky soft the background is. Like this is just complete mush, like super mush which is fantastic. Meanwhile, this guy here, ah, here's a perfect one. Okay, here's perfect. The further away we've got, as you can see, there's this green line. This is a green chromatic aberration. The bit which is ever so slightly closer, which is on this side, a purple chromatic aberration. So uh, I can't remember the term for that. It's something different where it's, it's a colour change of in uh, of the further away is green and the closer is here it's purple. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's uh, yellow and stuff like that but that's a very much a green away 
purple, because this was just a black, a black and white uh, image with these uh, green, red and blue there, but you can see definitely green, definitely purple. So that's something definitely to be aware of and something which could probably be fairly easily fixed in Photoshop. Uh, so just getting rid of that shouldn't be too difficult. Um, then again, here I'm shooting at f2.2 for some reason, I can't remember why I, I chose that, but I was looking at this rock to see how sharp it was getting the rock and how mushy the back, because again the rock is still pretty far away, but for me I would say that that is a very, I'm, I'm very happy with that. And we just increase the exposure a little bit, we can see, yeah, it's given us lots of good details there. And at f2.2, the chromatic aberration really has disappeared. So it's, once you've just stopped it down by one, one and a half stops, it's looking good. Again, this is a, this is actually a good way to shoot on an on a overcast day. It's a really good way to see where the limits of your lens's uh, ability is, because you can really see straight lines there, how well it resolves straight lines, and you're not distracted by the curves of the background. You can see at f2.2 here, that's now kind of more of a, a that's a different colour. It's not blue, it's not green, it's turquoise? I think that's, I think that's what it is. Uh, but again, I was just, he was just looking at the sharpness of this and I was trying to see, can I see all the way down to this guy down here? And I'm like, yes I can, he's looking good. I can read all the number plates of all these cars and that's from way back there. So I was like, the 24F 1.4 Samyang lens, sharpness wise, kicks ass. Now for me, I like my wide angle lenses, and this is a shot looking down where you kind of, there's two paths that go off in either direction, and that way's off to the right, that way's off to the left, and for me, I, I really wasn't kind of digging the width, and I remember I'm shooting this on a full frame Canon 5D Mark II, and I was thinking it's not feeling that wide, or, or I would like to be closer and have it wider, rather than having to step further back, so I wasn't really enjoying the almost wideness of the f of the 24 millimeters again looking at more kind of the sharpness going on in the image uh, and again this is another idea of uh, if you look at the background so for video this stuff is beautiful because you can have all this in almost focus okay it's a little bit out of focus there and a little bit out of focus there so the depth of field is probably from the r to the r kind of going on there to there but you go another 50 centimeters behind and it's just mush. So that that's really good if you're doing kind of video stuff with this. Because uh, if you're cropping this down to what is HD, which is effectively two megapixels, then pretty much all of that will seem to be in focus, but the background will be nicely blurred. Another thing I wanted to look at uh, of some more nature shots. Now, here's an example of just showing you how careful you have to be. So I'm using live view with all this and I think even whenever you're getting to macro stuff, even when you're moving slightly, breathing forward and back, you can get the focus all totally wrong. So here I thought I was focused on this and I'm looking at it going, it's not very sharp, it's not very good. And then what I did is I took another one and I just held my breath and then you get it as sharp as that and I was like, whoo, that, that is still impressing me just now. I'm I'm absolutely like, wow, that is impressive. So effectively, these were both the same photo, same time, same settings. The only difference was one I had slightly breathed out, another one I had held my breath. And this one, nothing, like, the, I must have been a little bit too far away or something because nothing's in focus at all there. However, when, see when you squeeze it out of that, nobody would notice. So that's still a, a what's that, it's like a, a six, no, a normal size photo on my screen there. However, this one, just getting the focus right, and it's just astonishingly how sharp the details are. Now it's at f2.2, I remembered that there. Again, looking at the bridge at f2.2, uh, so chromatic aberration lines getting even smaller once again, uh, and sharpness all the way from, oh, you can see a little bit of purple going on there. So yeah, you're gonna definitely have to be controlling your purple and your greens uh, chromatic aberration stuff with this lens. Uh, but sharpness-wise, even up to the edges, this is cute. So that like here is in this park, and right to the edge of this of the Samyang 24 to one no 24 millimeter, that is all looking absolutely fine, all very good. Impressed. Okay, he's a bit blurry, and that but that's still readable. I would say that's still looking pretty good. And then trying to get, like a, I was just trying to get a candle shot of this woman going past, see, 
again, a depth idea. This was still at f, uh, 2.2, and as you can see, the background building looking good and sharp. Lady slightly out of focus. So, if you're trying to do any street photography with an f2 with a 24 mil, you still need to be pretty spot on with your uh, with your focus. This is at 200th and a fifth, two, 250th of a second. It's a very short period of time, and that shouldn't really be causing motion blur from her. So I think that's definitely her being a little like you like you can see even her boot is a little bit blurred on the close one. That one's not moving at all. So yeah, definitely be careful with that. There's a phrase in photography saying that there's no such thing as bad weather, just wrong clothing. However, there there is sometimes pretty pump weather for trying to get interesting, nice, beautiful photos. Like just now, Edinburgh, beautiful city. In the autumn time, it's cool, it's creepy, it's gothic. But see when it's just overcast like this? You just can't make a photo look beautiful, inspiring or interesting in any way. Like this amazing waterfall, fountain kind of thing, got Edinburgh Castle over there. But when it's that dramatic and that uh, detailed and then it's surrounded by just a dull grey sky, really doesn't help any photo come to life. So is there any angle I can shoot, like walk around landscape? cityscape photos that will actually look interesting? <laughs> I don't think so. Lastly, I will also, here's a very iconic image in Edinburgh. This is of the uh, something fountain and Edinburgh castle in the background. So if you've never been to Edinburgh, that's what our castle looks like. Uh, it's kind of just a big kind of fortress on top of a volcanic rock. Volcanic plug, I think is what they call it. Uh, and then this, oh, in fact, See, that's how sharp this lens is. I can see it's A. Dureni something, I think that's all in French. Okay, can't quite read that. But again, so at the f2.2 and shooting uh, 24 millimeters, you're fairly wide, but for me, it wasn't quite wide enough. Uh, sharpness though, astonishing. Uh, I, I don't think I've added any sharpening to this, but that is, no one is ever, that is far out resolving even the uh, Canon 22 megapixel 5D Mark II. And I would say perfectly usable all over. Like, there's no chromatic aberration, uh, no, no um, vignetting going on in the corners here at all. And sharpness wise, it's, it's very, very pleasing, very pleasing. Slightly dull shots, uh, nothing really interesting there. Looking at the shallowness of the depth of the field, so again, as a video lens, Samyang really have created an absolute budget winner uh, lens here. And I think even the, the you know much more priced lenses wouldn't be as good as this. But let's see, this is a an extreme example of far away. Let's see how much does that. That's all kind of slightly mushy, but that's all good. That's I think that's where I was focused on this one. And then here's slightly blurry and purple vignetting going on. So just be careful with that. What I would say for me is that a 24 mil, a 24 prime lens doesn't really do much for me. I like my wide angles to be wide angle. I like, or you know, if I can do macro where I can get like super close to bits of trees, I like that. But 24 just isn't quite wide enough. Like for weddings, 24 is absolutely fine enough. You don't want to really go wider than that. But for city stuff, urban stuff, 24 is either just too wide for kind of a like a long shot like that, or not wide enough to get a kind of pano shot. It just doesn't really. It's not a lens for me. But if it's a lens for you this so far I think optically I've been pretty much walking around it with this about f2.8 and just shooting around about uh, let's see about 200th of a second ISO 200 f2.8 and it seems to be doing okay so final shot take a couple of images of this guy here don't know who he is uh, and uh, then we'll move over to 35 mil and here's an idea of just how much of a warping do you get when you're close up to something at, at, at or with the 24mm lens. And I was actually pretty happy with it. And again, here he, here's his butt looking up to the castle. And uh, what I can say 
is sharpness wise fantastic. Vignetting pretty bad at f1.4 up to f2. Once you go to f2.2 pretty much sorted. Chromatic aberration, a bit pump, you need to be uh, careful with that stuff. But for a video, if you're doing this with full HD video, what a stonkingly good lens. There you go. Hope that helps. Cheers. Bye-bye.